Just look for the parking lot full of cars. Yep, that's Charlie's Pizza. Hey, this is Joey Parton at the World Famous Charlie's Pizza. Come down and see it. First dates, fun with friends, celebrations, a break from work, whatever your excuse for stopping by Charlie's Pizza, everyone understands. Because we all love Charlie's for pizza, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and lots more. What's your favorite Charlie's Pizza specialty? What's your favorite Charlie's Pizza memory? It's the worst kept secret around. It's Charlie's Pizza in Jacksboro. See you there. Hello, welcome to the Tuesday night edition of Just Sports. My name is Les Martin, along with our executive producer, Miss Honeybee. And I'm Brent Allen. We certainly appreciate you taking an hour out of your day or your night to join us here on WLAF Channel 12, also on the FM side of the dial of 100.9, also AM 1450, and as well on 1450WLAF.com. Log on there, go over to the left hand of the page, left side of the page, click on the green screen, and you can watch us. So, worldwide. Worldwide, absolutely. Got some great news for the Lady Eagles, uh, the middle school team in Jacksboro. Wanda Snodgrass has done a great job with these kids all year long. Um, they've lost a couple of games during the season, I think three to be exact, just to give or take. I'm, I'm just pulling out of this out of memory because I don't know for sure, but I think it was like three games, three or four games they lost all year. They won tonight. They beat Liberty by a score of 41 to 37, and they play Friday in the Final Four. Final Four. If they win Friday, they'll play in the championship game Saturday. Do we know who they play? No. I do not know who they play. I wished I did. Um, I texted or, or sent a message to Coach Snodgrass, but I didn't want her to think that I was bothering or harassing yeah. her, so I didn't want to ask her too many questions. Sure. But she was uh, – Fantastic and giving me some information uh, on her Lady Eagles, and they've been a good basketball team. Absolutely, it's the good, boys, on the other hand, <laughs> had all the talent in the world, or I think had some uh, some talent. When I say I think, I mean they've had some talent. They've got talent. Unless they've got talent. Yeah, that, that's you're not you're not saying you're not speaking out of turn or whatever. They right. definitely have they definitely have talent. Now, I don't know, I don't know if it's a lack of cohesion or lack of teamwork, lack of coaching. I don't know what the situation may be, but I've I've watched these boys since they were five six years old. Right, there's some talent on that team. Oh, absolutely. We didn't fare too well um, during the season, nor in the in the district. We lost our first game to Robertsville, and of course, we played Robertsville. Uh, four or five times, uh, I think four times. We beat them every time except in the district tournament. And, and, you know, it's hard to beat a team four times. It's oh, hard yeah. to beat a team three times. I mean, let's face it, Campbell County Cougars, they beat Gibbs two consecutive times. They played them a third time last season, very first game, I believe, if mm -hmm. my memory serves me correct, and they lost to Gibbs. It's hard to beat a team consistently, especially on this level. Yeah, it's a tough draw when you have to play a team that you've played that many times. I mean, you're, you've got they've got a lot of film on you. A lot of uh, I mean, the coaches are watching a lot of things, and it goes both ways. But when you've got when you've beaten them that many times, uh, you may not be as a coach. You maybe maybe you don't pay that much attention to the details because you've been so successful. Of course someone who's lost that many times is going to try to find any way they can to win, find a weakness and uh, so forth. And, and you're exactly right because if I'm a coach and I'm winning and I'm beating your team, I'm not looking to get better right? because I'm thinking me beating you is good enough. <laughs> right. You, on the other hand, you're going to watch what we do. You're going to figure out how to beat us, how to stop what we were doing to beat you, and you'll figure out a way to beat us, and that's exactly what happened in district tournament with uh, the boys, uh, Jacksboro Middle School Eagles in the district tournament. It's a tough loss. So their season's over? Their season's over. Um, their season, season's over. That was last week, I believe it was, last uh, Tuesday. They lost in the district. Uh, okay. I don't know exactly who's going where on the boys' side. I know Clinton and Jefferson, both of those teams are extremely good. I would think if I was guessing, those two teams would be probably in the final four if I was just guessing. Yeah. Uh, both of those teams are excellent. I know Wanda Snodgrass is the athletic director at the middle school, or she was. I think she still is. Uh, she's going to be looking for a coach for the Jacksboro Middle School. Uh, and I don't know where that search is going to go. Uh, but hopefully we'll get somebody in there that, you know. For which team? The middle school. For the boys? For or the, the boys. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Wanda. 
one that coaches the girls, right. she ain't gonna. <laughs> yeah, she does a great job. I don't. I couldn't see her giving up her spot because simply because of the fact of uh, she's consistent. She's a she's a winner each and every year. Right. I mean, those kids just keep moving up and they keep going to the high school, and she still ends up with a winning team. Right. And it starts at the base of the foundation. Now, in in response to the coaches at the middle school for the boys, in defense to them. My son has played two years and has had three coaches. Yeah, that's tough. It is. It's it's absolutely tough. So that's tough for anybody at any level. I mean, if you if you've got different coaches, different terminology, different expectations, right. it's uh, it's tough for anybody. Uh, absolutely, I agree. Uh, the Lady Cougars they beat Powell tonight at home by a score of fifty-one to forty-two. They are twenty and four overall, eleven and one in the district, and they play Oak Ridge. Um, a week from Friday night. And Oak Ridge was the only one that handed them the one loss in the district. It's going to be at the high school. I've got to go to that game. I, I didn't get to go to tonight's game because I was in Kentucky. And then when I got home, of course, I had to get ready. So that's your plan in the final four? No, no, no. I'm talking about Lady Cougars. This oh, is Cougars. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah the Lady gotcha. Cougars. This is a regular <laughs> season. Um, Oak Ridge beat... Uh, the Lady Cougars is the only loss they've got in the district. Okay. Now, the Lady Cougars, like I said, beat Powell tonight by a score of 51-42. to 42. Powell was more hanging around in third place there. And if, they, if Powell would have beaten Campbell County, then that would have put some – that would have put Powell and Campbell County closer together between the second and third spot. Right. But Campbell County come out on top victorious. Um, I would like to see Old Ridge get beat by Campbell County a week from this Friday. Um, just to be perfectly honest with you, I think this Friday they play uh, at Anderson County. That's right. Campbell County plays at Anderson County this Friday night, so y'all need to make that short track down to Anderson County. And I know nobody likes to go down there. I I did when we called the football game for Campbell County Anderson County. I, I didn't like going down there. I, There's well, just something about it. But for me, it was not really who we were playing. It was uh, mostly the uh, the PA announcer. That got really, that really gets a cut on my nerves. <laughs> um, and I'm, and I'm, I don't know the man. I'm sure he's a, he's a good guy, but uh, and he does a good job. But he certainly doesn't, uh, you know, he does he doesn't hide his passion for Anderson County football. And, and I understand that. But generally, it, when you're when you're in a position like that, you're supposed to be, you know, cordial and and, and try to show excitement for both right. teams or whatever. You exactly. Know? And he certainly didn't do that. Do you know where he lives? Probably in Campbell County. He does. <laughs> he absolutely does. Well, that's not surprising to me. Yeah. He lives in Campbell County. He, he does a great job, except for the fact that, just to be perfectly honest with you, I call it like I see it, I think he's arrogant. <laughs> but and that's, I think that's a fair assessment. It, it is a fair assessment. But, you know, it is what it is. The boys, the Campbell County Cougar boys, they lost to Powell tonight by a score of 58-30. to 30. Campbell County can play a lot better than what they played tonight. Uh, listening to them on the radio, it didn't seem like the shots was going down like they wanted to. The defense wasn't playing as up-tempo as they normally do. They're an undersized team. They've got Stretch Bailey and they've got Elijah Phillips and they've got some others. And I've said this before, they don't have any seniors. But you know what? There comes a time to when you have to say these kids have been doing this all year it's not about experience anymore right I mean, they've gained enough experience playing especially playing older uh, older kids I mean you, you know as well as I do that that's the that's a way to get better you know right. when you're playing better competition you should get better um, but I agree I listened to the game tonight it sounded like just a, a lot of uh, I don't know what their percentage was from the from the floor but it was a uh, had to be low I mean it was yeah. a, a lot of missed shots just a little too strong you know and, and who knows maybe I get to watch the game I don't know if they were rushing the shots or what but it sounded like the the uh, the old iron was rough on them yeah uh, also Campbell County at one point in the first half was out rebounding Powell by uh, about four or five rebounds more than what Powell had so I really thought Campbell County and at that point they was within eight points or six points 19 to 13 or 19 to 11 I think it was 19 to 11 uh, eight points they were within to close closing in on Powell uh, but the second half just wasn't as kind to them as the first half and they couldn't make the comeback and um, it's tough loss for Campbell County 
uh, 58 to 30 against Powell, but they'll rebound. They'll play tough against Anderson County as we always do. Right. It's one of those. And, and I was thinking about this, uh, and I don't mean to ramble. Well, yeah, I do. It's okay, ramble. Yeah. Well, he, here's the thing. We always think that in basketball that Anderson County is a rival, but it's actually Halls. I've never understood that. But then I see a I see a post by Patrick Peebley. Oh yeah, the infamous uh, yeah fight game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it's been a rival ever since. And it's always great to beat Halls, and of course, Campbell kind of beat Halls. Both the girls, the girls beat Halls. And that was in the '80s, wasn't it? Yeah, the original, right. right. The original. But you know, a few years ago, there was an incident up there as well with Halls. Correct? Yes. Yes. Some people were taken out by the police. I don't know. I can't remember what all happened, but I do remember there was a an ugly situation. Yes. Uh, But let me tell you what the girls did to Halls. Girls. They beat them forty-nine to eight. Ooh. Wow. I thought it was a miss lick, a miss print, a miss something. <laughs> but they beat them. I think their score was 49 to 8. That's a solid beating. Yeah. At the hands of the Lady Cougars. And the boys won, of course, and I don't remember the score of that game. Oh, no. They lost 50 to 47 in overtime. Nah. So uh, that was the score. But Campbell County has played good basketball. The boys has played good basketball. The, the ball just hadn't bounced their way uh, on some games. And, of course, they've gotten some tough breaks as well when they've gotten some victories. So, I mean, it goes both ways. Sure. So, congratulations to both of those. I know Coach Housley is wishing or, or hoping that, you know, he could put together – at one point in time, he put together five consecutive wins, and that's when they were playing extremely well. Right. And now he's lost a couple back-to-back. So, hopefully they'll get it together before the district tournament gets here and they'll be playing some good basketball because that's actually – truly when you really need to play the good basketball. Oh, yeah. I agree. Uh, Kobe Stretch Bailey. Uh, he's a sophomore at Campbell County High School. Knoxville New Sentinel put out the Prep Extra Character Star Athlete Award for some schools, like Anderson County with Brandon Irwin. Clinton was co-lockered. Well, for Campbell County, it was Stretch Bailey. Well, wow. Yeah. Campbell County's got one in there, and it's Stretch Bailey. And, of course, for Jellicoe, it was Gage High Slope. I believe that's the way you pronounce that. If, if, I apologize if I messed that up, but I think it's High Slope. Uh, Gage High Slope for Jellicoe was the uh, Character Star Athlete Award for the Knoxville New Sentinel. So, and, and what does that mean? I mean, that just means they're not likely to get teed up for – it, saying some ugly stuff on the court. I mean, they're they're good kids and they and right. they do a good job. And I agree with that. I don't know Stretch uh, personally. I mean, I've talked to him a few times years ago, but he seems like a really good kid. He is a, an exceptional kid. We we've had him on the show here before. Very well spoken, very polite, and uh, he's had a good reason. Yeah, he's that's had, good. He's had a very good reason. Last week we were going to talk about. Wall High School and, the tennis, or, and their basketball team. Mm-hmm. A young man got assaulted on December 22nd over in Gatlinburg. It was an ugly assault. I'm not going to go into details because it certainly don't need to be on, out in the air. If you want to read the details, you can go on WBIR.com and you can read about it. But they're going to prosecute the athletic director and the two coaches. And I think they should. I can't wait until they start. I cannot wait until they hand the sentences down for these coaches. I agree. I mean, you know, as well as I do, when I was being coached by, when I was playing football or basketball or baseball, I looked up to my coaches. Mm-hmm. I respected my coaches. Maybe yeah. even feared them a little. Yeah. It had a lot to do with the way I was raised, but it had a lot to do with also with the way that those coaches treated me as an individual, as a human being, and most importantly, as a player. I could depend on it. I really felt like if I would have been in a fight or if my back would have been against the wall or if I needed something, I think Johnny Lettner or Mosier, Gary Mosier, or any of those guys would have done anything that I needed them to do. Yeah, man, that's what it's all about. 
But these coaches, uh, let me get this phone real quick. Thank you for calling Just Sports on the air. There he is. How are you doing, Miss Kay? Fine. Don't sound down in the dumps. You can't call the show and get down in the dumps because Brent and I was fired up today. Okay. There you go. <laughs> that was easy. That's, that's much better. Is everything going okay? Yeah. Good. Uh, are you glad the snow's gone? Yeah. Good, yes. At least you don't have to walk two miles to get to your husband's truck, right? Right. Has he got a four-wheel drive? Huh? Has he got a four-wheel drive? No. Oh, so that was the problem. Yeah, he is definitely the problem. Gotcha. He can't drive. I understand. That, now I understand the reason why he was probably um, not doing too well in the snow. My buddy over here, by the way, he's got a four-wheel drive. <laughs> I'd say he went pretty well. He did okay. Yep. My neighbor can't get it. Can't get it. That's the oil. You know. Do what? I said, my neighbor can't get that big oil either with the snow. Oh, really? Your neighbors couldn't get their vehicle out either with the snow? Uh-uh. He doesn't even got no four-wheel drive. Well, you know, I got a four-wheel drive sitting in my driveway, and I didn't get it out. Um, I tried to go to work a couple of different times, but the roads were so bad, I tried to get out in my car. That wasn't happening. And my four-wheel drive truck has got bald tires on it, so I know that wasn't going anywhere. Right. All I was doing, asking for trouble, sliding back down the hill, and end up over the mount, over the bluff. <laughs> That's what my husband did that day. That day when the truck came home, yeah, and then they went down over the hill and almost into some ladies' park. Never been down there. Oh, really? <laughs> that ain't good. Did you get nervous? Was you with him? No. You wasn't was with him. Oh, when he came, he was coming home, but I was home. Oh, got you. Then the police had called him. He he had called the police to him. His vehicle will be down there at the you know with a when you pay the when Ed when the uh, the public friend asked when you pay the minute. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. But there beside it. Oh okay. So you you talking about down off the hill, down off 917th, or down on uh, 4th Street or 8th Street or somewhere like that? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And he was right there. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm going to... Did you get to go to the banquet, the Campbell County Cougar banquet last uh, Saturday? No, I was not get to go nowhere. Yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah, down. Okay. Well I'm gonna ask you who's your favorite team. We're gonna carry on, okay? Okay, go good. All right, we'll talk to you next Tuesday. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Got some breaking news here. Yes, I seen that. Bye. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. Well, I mean, I, I don't have. I can't remember the uh, young man's name that that had committed to Tennessee. He's best friends with uh, Tyler Bird. Yes. Do you recall that? Yes. Carlos Fields um, Aim. That close. It's something like that. He'd already committed to Tennessee, and he talked to his best friend who had committed to Miami, which right. is a highly rated uh, Tyler Bird, highly rated cornerback, and according to Inside Tennessee, he has agreed to come to Tennessee. Really? Good. Because he was a hard commit for Miami. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, I was listening to some of the analysts today saying that it's highly unlikely that he would uh, – that he would – that he would be able, we would be able to flip him. That he was uh, he was big on Miami, um, but apparently somebody made a good impression. Good, absolutely, that's fantastic. Also, I have some breaking news. 
Uh, Tennessee Volunteers has upset Kentucky 84 to 77, and I'm loving it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really, really good. They needed that in a bad way. You know, it's not been a not been much of a year for Tennessee, um, and, and certainly not been a great year for the Lady Vols either. But right. a win like this, I, I can't remember the numbers again, and I'm sorry. I, I I listen to the radio and I hear these different numbers and things, but apparently uh, Tennessee has the the best record against Kentucky of anybody. Um, as far as I mean, they they've got a losing record overall, but it's for instance. Uh, 65 and 48 or something. Right. Um, so they've got a history of, of beating Kentucky, even when they're really hot. Yeah, they, they come back from a 21-point deficit earlier in the first half. They was down 34 to 13. And they come back and beat uh, Kentucky 84 to 77. And I'm going to tell you, I think, I don't know if you said something about burning Lexington down. If somebody said something That wasn't me. They'll burn Lexington down if John Calipari and the Wildcats lose to the Tennessee Volunteers. Well, they lost. They better get their lighters out. Yeah, they better get their lighters out. <laughs> uh, Kentucky has lost, uh, I think, six ball games now. Uh, that's the most they've lost in quite some time at one, you know, during the season. So, with that being said, congratulations to the Tennessee Volunteers. We was going to cover that uh, later on in the show as well, but. Getting back to Udawa and this assault that took place, the coaches, Andre Montgomery, which is the head coach, the mm -hmm. assistant coach, Carl Williams, and the athletic director, Allard Nayadli, have all been charged with a crime for not reporting an abuse case like this. Do we know what the actual charge is, what they're, what they're charging them with? I, I do not know. It didn't go into detail as far as what it was saying. It's just uh, like a criminal responsibility, something like that. Yes. And I agree. And that's what, you know, that's what I was going to touch on. You know, when we, when we let our kids play sports, regardless of what level, we put a certain amount of trust into the coaches. Oh, know? absolutely. And, and luckily, you know, these days it's gotten a lot better. I mean, they, they actually do background checks and so forth on, on, uh, on coaches. So that's good. That's a good a good start, but as a coach, they have to be. And, and we talked about what was the other uh, was it Bearden's coach that had yes. been disqualified. And this is this to me is right along the same lines. Those coaches can't be buddies with them, you know? right? And they can't. Um, they have to be above the fray. They have to be willing to, even if it means. The, the team gets in trouble or, or whatever happens, they have to have integrity and keep that team grounded. I, I agree 100%. Uh, it says here that uh, Outside the Lines on ESPN has done a story on this. It hasn't aired yet to the best of my knowledge, and I could be wrong, but I don't think it's aired because I watch Outside the Lines every weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's one of those situations where head coach Andre Montgomery and assistant coach Carl Williams were reportedly upstairs in the cabin at the time of the attack. They're, they're in the same building? The same yes. Building? Wow. Yes. They also obtained a sealed police report that is part of the criminal case against the three players, which includes previously unreleased details of how the attack unfolded. Now, I'm not going to read any more. Like I said, if you want to read more, you can go to 247 Sports or... You can jump on to WBIR.com. Certainly don't need to be on the radio. Not like that anyway. But the athletic director, the head coach, and the assistant coach have all been charged. And I think it's for uh, failure to report um, an abuse case of some sort. And I, I can't remember right off the top of my head. And I, I don't know exactly where the other report's at that I could read Yeah, real quick to give you the for sure details. But... Do a little bit of research. It's a big deal. I mean, it really Absolutely. is something, and I hope they, I hope they make an example of these guys because oh, other, other coaches need to control those guys. I mean, if you were upstairs in the same cabin, and I mean, I, and again, we won't go into the details, but it sounded like a violent attack. You Absolutely. Know, and and it wasn't, it wasn't your typical hazing, you know, whipped cream issues or whatever. It was much, much more um, violent and. Um, it's just hard to imagine that you could be in the same the same house and, and not hear what was going on or not have somebody down there with them. I mean, my goodness, you know, 
It just it just seems crazy to me. Uh, the, it was so violent, like you said, it was so violent that the kid ended up spending some time in the hospital. Yeah, had to have surgery. Yes. Yeah. So, the bottom line is, kids, if you're out there, seniors, juniors, leave the freshmen alone. There's no sense. There's no. There's no such thing or there shouldn't be a problem or an issue with any hazing because it doesn't do anything but gives the program a black eye, gives yourself a black eye and hurts innocent people that, that's innocent bystanders. Right, and not only that, what's the purpose? And I don't know where it started and I'm not sure I mean, don't get me wrong, we, everybody pranks and stuff and has fun in the locker room and things like that, but think about this. You, you know, you've got your upperclassmen Doing things to to these freshmen, um, how how can you expect those guys to come out and play and support you? And and you know, I mean, that, that's just crazy. I would I would be of the mindset that I need you. I want you to come play for us. You yeah. must be pretty good. You know, I mean, right. you made the team. You must be pretty good. Um, whatever happened to helping them along and being their being a mentor and teaching them things? You know, instead yeah. of instead of this craziness. It's just you know, good. we did some things when I was. And football, sure. Like we would use bomb, you know, bomb, Bengay. Well, it was a big orange, the orange stuff. It's called orange bomb. Mm -hmm. It's probably before your time, maybe. But it was in a big. <laughs> what was it used for? Muscle rub. Oh yeah, and same was, as same as the Bengay stuff. And it was really hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We would put it places in other <laughs> folks's clothing. Right. That would be about the extent of it. Right. It'd be very irritating to him, but it would not leave lasting, you know, right. injury or even trauma. Really, I mean, it was exactly. just a, a funny, a funny joke, and that's that's the way it should be, you know. And that, and I understand that some of that it builds camaraderie, you know. That's that's part of guys, you know, being guys doing the things they do. But this case, and I'm sure it's not the only one. I'm sure it happens a lot. But what does that say about our society? What does that say about? coaches these days and uh, you know what are they doing you know what are they doing other than just x's and o's right well here's the thing it was so bad there's so much publicity over this as well as they should be but this, they had to cancel their whole season the yeah. rest of their season that was left and let's face it this happened in the end of december they've got january and february left plus the district and it all got canceled that's how serious this incident was as well as it should be yeah rightfully so yeah so with that being said we got to step away for a short commercial break you are watching just sports wlef sports network Listen up, Cougar fans, wherever you are. Berg Screen Printing in the heart of La Follette next to Big Creek is the place to go for all things Cougar. T-shirts, caps, jackets, and much more. If it's Cougars, it's at Berg Screen Printing. 423-562-3044. Need T-shirts or caps or polos for your business, special event, or church function? Berg is the business to call. Lettering, screen printing, and especially for all things Cougar. Berg Screen Printing in the heart of La Follette. <laughs> Folks, this is Robert again from your Sears hometown store. If you're having trouble tossing and turning in bed or having a backache or your uh, partner wakes you up when they come to bed, we can uh, solve your problem with our Sealy Posturepedic mattresses or other name brand mattresses at your Sears hometown store. So come on down to your Sears hometown store and get some rest for your eyeballs with one of our Sealy or other fine mattresses. Just look for the parking lot full of cars. Yep, that's Charlie's Pizza. Hey, this is Joey Fortin the world famous Charlie's Pizza. Come down and see it. First dates, fun with friends, celebrations, a break from work, whatever your excuse for stopping by Charlie's Pizza, everyone understands because we all love Charlie's for pizza, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and lots more. What's your favorite Charlie's Pizza specialty? What's your favorite Charlie's Pizza memory? It's the worst kept secret around. It's Charlie's Pizza in Jacksboro. See you there. Welcome back to the Tuesday night edition of Just Sports. My name is Les Martin, along with Mr. Brent Allen. Uh, we've had a great time. We've talked a lot about high school basketball as well as we should. We've talked some about our Lady Cougars, our men's basketball team, also the Lady Eagles. They won tonight 41-37. They'll be going Friday to play in the Final Four. If they win Friday in the Final Four, they'll end up playing in the championship game on Saturday. Uh, I believe it's in Sevierville, if I'm not mistaken. The Lady Cougars won tonight. Just a quick recap: they won tonight by a score of 51 to 42. Uh, Campbell County Cougars boys 
the men's team lost 58 to 30. Kobe Stretch Bailey was named the character athlete by the new Sentinel. I think that's a great accomplishment for Stretch Bailey. And of course, last but certainly not least, um, the Campbell County Cougars boys team is playing uh, not really good right now. They had five straight wins earlier in the season, but they've kind of lost a handle on it. But Coach Howes will get them back on the cue there. Right. Um, you went to the football banquet. I did. I'm even sporting the shirt they gave me. I'm sure they've got one waiting on you as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the deal Big Mike Rhodes, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Did I see what? Big Mike Rhodes uh, was voted All State. Mm hmm. Yeah, as an offensive lineman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't see that. No, let me say this. Big Mike Rhodes is a lot bigger than I am. Yeah, don't get mad, buddy. Yeah, Whether don't get not. mad because we're not taking anything away from you on the offensive side. Yeah, he should have been defensive. Absolutely. I mean, I, that, that blew me away when they actually uh, announced that. When he said for offensive lineman, I thought, what? I mean, yeah, I could. I mean, not only could I understand, but I would. Have, I would have even voted yes on defensive line. Right. Odd. I don't know how they do it. So. He, he was. Uh, he was an absolute. He was like a Derek Barnett top player. If you want to know what Mike Rhodes, Big Mike Rhodes, plays like on defense, he plays like a, a Derek Barnett. Yeah. He's a rambling wreck. Big, strong, athletic, can move. Yes, can move and is strong. But anyway, he is a um, he is named All State Big Mike Rhodes for the offensive lineman. Of course, he came in when another young man went down with an injury, and he filled in. <coughs> excuse me, very nicely. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Vols and the Wildcats. Campbell. Uh, Tennessee Volunteers beat. Kentucky Wildcats by a score of 84 to 77. That's a great victory for Cam or I won't keep wanting to say Campbell County, but <laughs> Tennessee Volunteers. That's yeah. a good victory for them. And um, that's that's pretty bad. I mean, they've lost Kentucky Wildcats has lost six games. Just yeah, six. which is a great season for anybody, but they're 16 and six. Right, that's that's a excellent season so far for most anybody. But of course, if you're a Wildcats fan, and um, we certainly know there's some around here who yes. like who like to support the Wildcats stuff. Bandwagon. Yeah, but I, and, and you know, here's the thing. Here's one of the things that kills me about that, and I'm getting a little off subject. But these guys, these guys that that are Kentucky fans, right. so often. If you mention something like bandwagon or whatever, they'll say, "Well, I've been a I've been a Wildcat fan for 15 years," you know. But they don't pull for the football team. That's no, 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 bandwagon. no. Well, I agree, but the thing is, 15 years ago, they were really good too. So it's sure. not like it's not like you're making a stretch to go, "Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a Wildcats fan, um, win, lose, whatever." You know, I'm I'm a Wildcats fan. No. Right now, you when you pick a team, it's like somebody being up, somebody being from Tennessee being a Patriots fan, and I'm sure I know that there's some out there a lot, but uh, you know, I, just to me, to me, it doesn't make sense. That's why I mean, I don't understand if you're going to pull for a team, there should be more to it than just well, they're a winning program, so I'm going to I'm going to jump on that bandwagon and ride. Right, exactly. I agree 100. percent I I agree 100. percent But anyway, uh, Tennessee Volunteers spanked. And I do mean spank because Tennessee came back from a 21-point deficit to beat the Kentucky Wildcats. Also, we're going to talk about football recruiting. And I'm not going to say real quick because this thing is complicated. It is. Tomorrow is National Signing Day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a lot of kids that's going to commit on ESPN. And of course, I'm going to be working. I'm going to be with my boss, so I'm not going to be able to have it on my phone. I can probably turn on Your the boss is not a football fan? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I but understand. He talks a lot. Ah, so you can't really pay attention to other things. No. I understand. I that. mean, he'll ask you a question, and before you answer, he's on to the next one. Yeah, you got to be quick. I say, stop a minute. Let me explain. Let me say this. I'm still talking. Exactly. Well, this is uh, this is interesting. I mean, this this uh, flip from Tyler Bird, who, who by the way, is a, a unanimous four-star cornerback. Um, I mean, this kid's the real deal. Absolutely, and, and for him to flip the night before, hopefully we'll get the ball rolling because we've got some some big names. Uh, I just said it a minute ago, Derek Brown. Derek Brown. Um, 
Of course, Nigel Warrior, there's, most people are saying that he's probably a Tennessee. He's probably going to come to Tennessee. Um, but there's a couple of more. Um, Kongbo looks good. Looks good like he's still going to make it to Tennessee. But there's a couple that are still on the fence that are five-star, four-star guys that uh, – that all the analysts are saying, no, they're 90% going here, going there, whatever, not coming to Tennessee. But I'm telling you, I, well, I hope more than anything. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to say that this is going to be that that flip is going to help somebody. Somebody, maybe not, maybe not a couple, but one of these players are going to go. You know what? This kid was a hard commit to Miami. He saw something at Tennessee that made him change his mind. Right. I'm going with Tennessee. Absolutely. He is the national ranked 86th player, 86th best player national nationally ranked. He's in a top 100 prospect of 247 Sports Composite. Position ranking, he's number 10. And in the state of Florida, uh, out of the state of Florida, all the athletes combined, he's 15th best athlete yeah, in the state of Florida. And that's saying something. Florida is loaded yeah. with athletes. He's a pretty good sized kid. He's 5'11 and a half, almost six foot, and 194 pounds. Well, that's, I mean, for for that height, that's that's a good weight. I mean, that's sure. just, he, I'm sure he's a strong kid. You know, for a cornerback, he could be 5'9", 5'10", 5'11". That can still be very effective, sure. you know, at, at the shorter eight or shorter height. But at 5'11 and a half, he's probably going to grow another half inch to an inch, you know, before he's before it's all said and done. He will be the prototypical uh, cornerback size. Oh, absolutely. Because you know he's going to put on some muscle. You, you, you look at him maybe uh, his second year in the program, you're probably looking at Six foot, six foot and a half, um, two hundred and ten pounds. He'll be a stud. Oh yeah, absolutely. He, I, I, I believe that. And looking at the crystal ball, we're going to go over this real quick. I say real quick, but it's not real quick. Uh, the two four seven sports has got Nigel Warrior, which is the son of Dale Carter, like you had said a couple of weeks ago. He's six foot, one hundred eighty six pounds. He's a safety. Mm -hmm. They've got him about seventy one percent. They think 71% that he'll commit to the University of Tennessee. Rest of them is Alabama and Georgia and Auburn, and Alabama 16%. You don't hear anything about Nigel Warrior going to any place else except for the University of Tennessee. I think that Nigel Warrior will end up committing to the University of Tennessee uh, tomorrow. Now, that's just yeah, I think so my too. opinion. I feel pretty comfy with that one. Um, Derek Brown, uh, he's from Buford, Georgia. 47% of the, the these guys think that 47% he's going to commit to Georgia. Auburn's 44% and Tennessee's 8%. So Tennessee really by the... Yeah, guys. according to them, he's at, we're out of the running. Right. And I don't think it's that bad. I don't either. I don't think that... Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really agree with those numbers just because... I mean, he's not, is he not the one that tweeted the... Uh, Yes. He tweeted the lyrics to Rocky Top after he came this past weekend. He was in Tennessee. Right. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if he's, he's not one of those guys that um, makes a big splash. I agree. I agree 100%. He finished his fifth and final vi uh, official visit um, with the Vols. Of course, he had him one at uh, Georgia, Alabama, uh, and a couple other places. I don't remember. Auburn. So... Um, Jonathan Conbo, they're saying that 47%, the specialist here on 247 Sports mm -hmm. saying 47% of this chance that he goes to the University of Tennessee, although uh, Florida State's got a 12% chance. Do you think we're that close, that strong with Conbo? I do. I think that he only decommitted to to get some more official visits and to just kind of enjoy the recruiting process because he committed to Tennessee a long time ago. He's the number one rated JUCO player in the country, um, which, by the way, Bush Jones is doing a great job with the JUCO players. Yes, he is. Our Tennessee, I mean, just if you go back several years, we've been right. doing really well with the JUCO players. But I do believe that he, uh, I do believe that he's going to commit to Tennessee. And um, like I said, I think the the whole decommitment thing was just to open up his recruiting, get a few extra uh, visits, go out and hang out with some other guys. He is the number one nationally ranked JUCO player in the nation. The number one in his position, number one in the state, number one nationally. Defensive end. Uh, yes, four-star I mean, defensive end. Right, Barnett's going to be gone next year. 
And he knows. Oh, I that. guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Barnett will go to the NFL next year. He's a junior, right? Or he, yeah. He'll be a junior. He'll be a junior this year. So, um, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with his decision because everybody knows Barnett, you know, barring some kind of injury or something like that, will we'll be gone next year and he should be able to step in and make a difference. He, he may be able to step in this year. Oh, I agree. Oh, absolutely. He, sure, he should be able to at least. Uh, give breaks, you know, come in and, and, and get a few snaps throughout the season as a freshman. He's six foot five and a half, two hundred and sixty four pounds. And that's a pretty good size for how many years of eligibility? He'll have two years. Just oh, okay. like Alvin Kamara. Right. Um, Alvin Kamara played last year. He came in uh, as a JUCO and then he'll have one more year this year, uh, which Kamara will be a senior if I'm not mistaken. Nope. Nope. Junior, he's in the same class as uh, Jalen Hurd. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So he'll be a junior. He'll be a junior, but he'll he'll go. Yeah, I think he'll go. And I think Jalen Hurd will as well. Yeah, I think Jalen Hurd. Of course, Jalen Hurd has the opportunity. He's a better player. I think he's a better all-around player than Kamara. But Kamara, uh, I don't think he got. I don't want to say a fair shake, but that seems like the only word I can come up with to. Uh, describe what I'm trying to say. I don't think he was put in ideal situations all the time. I agree. I think that they tried to use him as the same the same style back as, as her, and they're just two different guys. They run different. I mean, this guy's dynamic. I mean, there's no doubt he's an athlete, you know, as good as you'll find. Um, great speed. We've seen him hurtling people and running down the sidelines. I mean, he's really a great athlete, special, special athlete. But um, when you – when you set up a offense and you've got Jalen Hurd at 240 pounds, you know, six foot three, six foot four, whatever, um, he's just a different kind of runner. So when you when you pull him out and put Kamara in and try to run him between the tackles, he, and he's had some success, but right. you can't expect the same kind of bruising style as Hurd. Absolutely. I mean, I'd like to see him, like to have seen him in a slot receiver position um, to utilize, you know, utilize his speed and ability in the open field. Yeah, I agree. And they did a lot of that towards the end of the season mm -hmm. on those little screen passes or little wheel routes out of the backfield for Kamara. Uh, but I think they'll probably, I think Mike DeBoer would probably readjust the way he does things for Alvin Kamara next. To season coming up, I agree. I think they should too. They should find a way to get him the ball in different, in different, or different situations. I wouldn't mind seeing him split out as a wideout as well, uh, because with his speed, there's not going to be a lot of cornerbacks that's going to be able to stay with him. That's true. Of course, I don't know if he can run a route, but you know, <laughs> well, I don't either. <laughs> with his, with his, with his athletic ability, you know, he could probably make up for it. Yeah. Landon Dickerson is another one. He's an offensive lineman. He's six foot five, three hundred pounds. For a long time, he's been a strong contender. Tennessee has been a strong contender for Dickerson, but since uh, the prognosticators has got Dickerson going to Florida State at ninety percent chance, and don't even have Tennessee listed on the board. Wow. Yeah. But at the same time, look at Tyler Bird right underneath it. They've got him as a hard commit to the University of Miami, and now he's flipped to Tennessee, has committed, has officially committed to Tennessee. We'll probably sign papers tomorrow. Yes. I'm assuming. Yeah, that's according to him, yes, he has made a verbal commitment to Tennessee as of about ten minutes ago. Okay. So anything can happen with Landon. Yeah, he could and, and then this guy could still change his mind. I mean, until they right. sign the papers it's, it's not really that, that big of a deal. And I'm surprised. I really I felt good about Landon Dickerson. I really thought I, that, too. I thought he was a, almost a lock. Well, that's what I thought, too. That's yeah, weird. I don't know how they come up with this stuff. Well, I don't either, but the prognosticators have spoken, and we'll just have to read what they're saying and disagree or agree, and mm -hmm. I, disagree with, I, I disagree with the status that they have on Landon Dickerson as well. Right. Latrell Williams is a hard commit. He's another one. Uh, they don't even have him listed as far as even uh, – I know that he had a – um, he was going to take an official visit uh, to Tennessee on the weekend of January 22nd, but the weather, I believe, yes. has to do with that. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, he's committed to Miami, correct? Yes, he's a hard commit to Miami. I just wonder if you know. You never know. I mean, if, how how good are friends are they? Right. Tyler Bird and him. So who knows, you know, you, you can still pull him. Here's one that surprised me. Nicole Hardman Jr. 
I really thought he was going to be a Tennessee ball. I did too. I did too. And I, the more him, I, go ahead. Well, the more I've read and and, and heard or whatever, um, I'm feeling pretty pretty solid. He'll probably stay in Georgia. He's from Georgia, right? Uh, Alberton, Georgia. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah, I believe he's one of those guys that's going to stay. I, I mean, I don't know how how good he really is. They've got him rated as a four or five star. I'm, I'm five believe. star. Yeah, I mean that would be that'd be a huge get, but I don't feel very comfortable about it. Yeah, he's five foot ten, one hundred sixty nine pounds. He's an athlete, of course. They've got him listed as a five star athlete. Jaquan Bailey. I really thought we had a better chance at Jaquan Bailey. Uh, they had mentioned him a, a couple of different times. He's a three-star wideout. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, defensive defensive end. I'm sorry. I said wideout. It's actually a defensive end. He's six two to uh, six two and a half, two hundred forty five pounds. It's almost linebacker size. Yeah. Unfortunately, these days that's the way it's that's the way it's going. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I and I wonder. You know, these, these kids they talk on the social media and all that. And you, you never know. He he very easily could have. Uh, Texted or tweeted or whatever to uh, to Congo and basically say, hey, you know, look, are you going to Tennessee or not? I mean, if if Congo says he's going, that's going to knock him out of the saddle. You know, they're playing the same position. I mean, I know there's two ends, and he could, of course, play the other side. But if he's looking at early playing time or things like that, he he may not want to deal with the competition of a Congo. Yeah, you're probably right. I I know that if. You know, sometimes I think um, some of these quarterbacks that the University of Tennessee has got, um, because the other young man that transferred out to Washington or wherever it was that he went to. Yeah, who was that? Uh, oh, I don't remember his name, but he's back. That's right. Oh, yeah, uh, Sharian Jones. Yeah, that's it. Sharian, Sharian, I'm, I'm probably messing his name up, but it's uh, – S H E R R I win, I believe. I thought it was Sharon Jones. Yeah. Either way, that was that worked out nicely for us. Yes, because now it puts us three quarterbacks at And plus he's he's got the ability to play other positions. Like he's the kind of guy receiver. right. He's got the ability to if you know, if if uh, Jared uh, you know, help me out. One, <laughs> it's one not Guantanamo. Guantanamo. Something like that. Guantanamo? Yeah, whatever it is. Um I think it's Guantanamo. Yeah, that sounds right. But he uh you know, I mean, if he comes in and, and is everything he's supposed to be, this still leaves um, Jones with a position, he, with the opportunity to play somewhere else, if, I mean, somewhere else on the team. Right, exactly. And you know what? He knows that Jared Guantano was coming to the University of Tennessee. That's going to give him four scholarship quarterbacks uh, at that position for the University of Tennessee next year. You'll have yeah, and, freshman. and if anybody doesn't know, Jared, say his last name again. Guantano. <laughs> he uh, he's the number one rated dual threat quarterback in the entire country. Right. So that's that's a big deal. Oh, absolutely. And who's the other quarterback um, behind uh, Joshua Dobbs? Quentin Normandy. Yes, he is another good one. He can throw the ball. I look for I look for one, at least one of these quarterbacks to transfer. Uh, if not next season, the following season. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, we'll see how things shake out. You know, during spring practice and all that, and they'll start figuring out who's you know who's actually got it and who doesn't. And um, yeah, I agree. One of them will probably end up going elsewhere. I agree. Now we got about ten minutes left. Well, that's great because I actually wanted to talk because I I don't think I certainly didn't know this. We talked about all these guys and all the stars by their names and so forth, and you know how great it is if we get a five star, or a four star, and this and so forth. But uh, this, you, you still have that pull? Yeah, this blew me away. When was the last time we talked about? I mean, we don't even talk about three stars much. I mean, we talk about them like it's a disappointment. Ah, he's just a three star. Right. We never. I didn't even know they had two stars. Do they have one star? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, it makes sense you'd have one, two, three, four, five, but you never hear about it. You know, I mean, a two-star football player, in my opinion, when it comes to Division One, big-time football, you just don't hear about it. it. I mean, it seems like teams are all three-star and up, basically, or at least the big-time teams. Exactly. Well, uh, Saturday Down South has released the starting lineup, uh, offense and defense, for both uh, Carolina and Denver, and me being you know the the, the way I think, it's all four and five stars. I mean these guys to make it to the NFL, 
and they make it to the Super Bowl, these guys must be, be highly ranked. Exactly. Well, I won't bore everyone with every single one, but they did break it down uh, and give a total. Now, Carolina has six five stars. That's a lot. Sure. You know, that's that's a lot of five star players. Four four stars, three. I mean, five three stars and one two star. Um, a two star. That that just kills me. I just can't believe that there's there's a two star who coming out of high school. He was ranked as a two star player, and he is now starting for the Super Bowl. Well, not champions, but the Super Bowl team or a Super Bowl team. Denver. Luke Keithley. That's correct. Yeah, and he's widely considered one of the best linebackers in the entire NFL right now. Absolutely. And he is. He is all over the place. Folks, boys, kids at home, think about that. Think about that. Yep. This guy probably got very little attention out of high school. You know, he I don't know where he went to college. I'm sure we can look it up. But you keep talking that's yeah, what I absolutely I'll do that. And as a two star, you know I mean somebody may have recognized his his ability and the, the fact that he's going to grow into the position or something. I don't know. I'm really curious now to find out who it was because that coach should be the coach of the year for that year or whatever. But anyway, let's go to uh, to Denver. Um, by the way, Peyton Manning did not have a ranking uh, from 247 Sports uh, coming out of high school. Most of the other um, Analysts had him at a at a five star quarterback, but in for this for the purposes of this, he's not rated. These are all two four seven sports ratings, composite scores. For Denver, one five star on the entire team, and that's not of course now Manning again is would be considered a five star, but since he was not rated, they have only one five star, four four stars. Seven three stars and five count them five two star athletes out of high school playing in the Super Bowl and it's also starting in right the Super Bowl. is that the defense or is that just overall well, that's overall that's okay yeah um, because they had three that were uh, or I'm sorry seven of the players were not rated um, coming out of high school by the by the by two four seven sports now either way you know you could say well maybe those are all maybe they were all five stars it doesn't matter the bottom line is five two stars. And mm-hmm. seven three stars. Wow! Starting the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl. That's amazing. Uh, Luke Keithley, he's 24 years old. He's from Cincinnati. That's where he was born. He's 6'3", 240 pounds. Like I said a few minutes ago, that's a good linebacker size. He went to. He played his college football at Boston College. Was recognized twice as a consensus All-American. And this was a two-star kid coming out of high school. Right. And well, I mean that was recognized as a two. Two-time consensus All-American. Yeah, and, and whoever recruited him is probably a uh, mastermind. Yeah, exactly. Because you, I don't know. I'm not a recruiter. I'm not a uh, college coach. I don't know what they look at as far as I, I have to assume that the stars would have something to do with it. I mean, yeah, you know, they they're not ranking these these guys. Other uh, programs or other outlets uh, rank these guys. And they're generally very close. I mean, you'll have some have somebody a five star, some that's a four, you know, that on the same guy. But uh, for somebody to take a chance on a kid that's considered a two star coming out of high school, they saw something. Right. I mean, obviously his size. Of course, I don't know if he was some some kids grow quite a bit, you know, after high school. So it's possible that he grew into himself, or however you want to put it. And uh, just really worked hard. But the the point I want to make is, you know, kids these days a lot of times look at look at this stuff and go, you know, I could never I could never make it to the NFL. I mean, I'm I'm not fast enough, or I'm not big enough, or I'm not strong enough. Um, if you work hard enough, even coming out of high school, you might not have the rankings to set. But if you can get your foot in the door, have the grades, and get on a college team somewhere, right? Even a even one of the smaller uh, NAIA or Division three, whatever. You can still get recognized, and you can still go to the, go to the pros. It just takes a lot of hard work and effort, and uh, it can happen. Let me tell you, it's like this: you can work out, you can have excellent speed, you can have muscles, you can do all of that. But I promise you, if you're an underdog as a young kid and uh, coming out of high school, and you're trying to make a football team. The biggest muscle they're going to grade you by is that one right there. Absolutely. That's the absolute truth. I, I talked to a lot of, you know, college coaches. I mean, obviously not 
the, the big time guys like that. But I talked to a lot of college coaches that told me the exact same thing. They they watch players, they watch film, and they don't watch, they don't care about highlight films. Right. You know, and I'm I'm bad about it. I mean, anybody that's Facebook friends, back when Slayton was playing, I was always, you know, posting highlight films and stuff. And I love it. I mean, I love watching my kids play, and I'm proud of them. But honestly, those coaches would, they don't want music. They don't want highlights. They want to watch a game. And they want to watch what he does when he's not making a big play. Absolutely. They want to see what he's doing in between because that's, that's the difference between a good football player and a great football player. It's the guys that are fighting off blocks. Yeah, you didn't make the tackle, but you you took up two blockers. It, it took two blockers to keep you out of the play, right. which allowed the other linebacker to make a tackle. For exactly. instance, I mean that's just and it goes that way with everything. As a lineman, you know, if you're a defensive lineman and it takes two guys to block you, you might not make one sack. But the fact that you're taking up two of them every play consistently and putting heart into it every single play, that's what they look at. Oh, absolutely. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's giving your buddy over there across the way an opportunity to get to the quarterback. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, and, and let me just say this. Uh, Slayton Allen, uh, when he played, played an excellent position at linebacker and played an excellent job, done an excellent job on the offensive line. This kid played both ways. As one individual that I've ever seen play for Campbell County High School, and I've seen a lot of them play, I think he has had probably one of the biggest hearts as far as an individual uh, on the football field. He was also talented. You're making me blush. <laughs> well, I can tell you this, and I've told, I tell my other sons and, and anybody that asks, he's not, he was never the best athlete on the field by any means. He never was. He was never that fast. He was never, um, but but he did have good instincts. He did. Oh, absolutely. And he did work his tail off. Coach uh, Mike Miller told him in seventh grade that he was too small to play linebacker, and he took it as a challenge. And and I don't and nobody. You know anybody listening? You can look at the you can look at the numbers up there. He was the strongest guy on the team. I mean, pound for pound, he was the strongest guy on the team. And it was not because genetics or because of natural ability. He right. just worked really hard. He was up there. He was working out in the yard. You know, doing his training. He was going to the gym all the time. He was watching film, just doing all the stuff that you got to do. And of course, now it doesn't matter. He's joined the army and and left college. But the point is, anybody can do it if you really want to and put your effort into it. It's like this. Kids, I'm going to say it plain as day. You show me an uncoachable kid and I will show you an unemployable adult. You're exactly right. And That's I, good. I, I've seen that on, uh, I've seen oh, that I was, on the I was, internet. I thought maybe that was something you no, came up with. That was I, good. Not, I cannot take <laughs> credit for that. So anytime that you hear a coach getting at, after your kid, it's not to belittle them or make them feel bad. Uh, it is a fact to motivate them and to teach them discipline and to teach them the difference between being coachable and uncoachable. You're absolutely right. So keep that in mind. And with that being said, boy, we have run out of time. Wow. I've got to say this real quick. Hang on a minute, honeybee. Honey, we'll be right out. Here's the situation. Denver Broncos against Carolina Panthers, Super Bowl this Sunday. Is it this Sunday? It's this Sunday. I thought it was next Sunday. No, it's this Sunday. Holy cow. Here's the situation. I'm scared to death of Panthers. I'm scared to death of the Carolina Panthers. You're going to do it, aren't you? I'm going with the Denver Broncos. I have got to go with the Denver Broncos. You know what? The last to run for Peyton, the defense, number one. If you would have told me, and here's where I'm going, just like Big Earl said last Tuesday, if the Denver Broncos and Wade Phillips can make – uh, Tom Brady looked like Jack in the Box and have no clue what's going on around him. Oh yeah, they will be able to out Fox um, Cam Newton. I, I agree. Uh, Big Girl made a great point, and, and I'll tell you, um, my head says Carolina, but my heart says Denver, and I always go with my heart. There you go. Go Broncos. Same, same here. Go Broncos. All right, folks, that's it. We certainly appreciate y'all tuning in tonight. Uh, tune in next Tuesday night at nine o'clock right here on WLAF. Four. Our executive producer, Miss Honeybee. My name is Les Martin. I'm Brent Allen. God bless. Go Cougars. Listen up, Cougar fans, wherever you are. Bird Screen Printing in the heart of La Follette next to Big Creek is the place to go for all things Cougar. T-shirts, caps, jackets, and much more. If it's Cougars, it's at Bird Screen Printing. 423-562-3044. Need T-shirts or caps or polos for your business, special event, or church function? Burge is the business to call. Lettering, screen printing, and especially for all things Cougar. Bird Screen Printing in the heart of La Follette.
Hello folks, this is Robert again from your Sears hometown store. If you're having trouble tossing and turning in bed or having a backache or your uh, partner wakes you up when they come to bed, we can uh, solve your problem with our Sealy Posturepedic mattresses or other name brand mattresses at your Sears hometown store. So come on down to your Sears hometown store and get some rest for your eyeballs with one of our Sealy or other fine mattresses.